The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, um, welcome. Good morning. Good afternoon. Depends on where you're where you're at. Um, my name is Myla Kelly. I am in. Um, Chile, Bozeman, Montana. I'm at Montana State University, and I'm the co-chair of um, a national, uh, our national tribal pollution prevention work group, along with um, Shannon Judd, who um, is also on the call. So, I wanted to welcome you to our the first of our series. We're going to be um, focusing in the next couple of months about on um, tribal green casinos. So we're going to go through a number of different. Uh, casino issues that I'll, I'll talk about in a minute, but just for those of you who don't know who we are, I wanted to just um, introduce you to the group quickly. Um, this is a work group that was formed quite a long time ago. We've got some longevity on our side here. Uh, the work group was formed in 2003. Um, we do a lot of, we cover a lot of topics, but um, the main task of the work group is to identify and address environmental issues that are affecting tribal nations around the country. So even though I'm in Montana, this is um, we do work with tribes all around the country. Um, and, and we focus on issues that pertain to pollution prevention. And that's a really broad category that just basically describes any activity that's eliminating or reducing pollution at the source rather than treating it down the line. So um, we've had speakers um, with our Tribal P2 series that have ranged from topics on renewable energy, everything from solar to algae to biofuels to wind. Um, we have have um, tribes present on their solid waste programs. We've had um, presentations on vegetated roofs. We even had a straw bale gardening talk. So it really kind of runs the gamut. Um, but we have a site. Our website is tribalp2.org. And we try and share this information via our website and through conference calls and presentations like this one. Um, these are. This is just a, a map of where our work group members are. And when I say work group members, these are folks that participate on, or that get our listservs, um, emails on different topics, um, and, and that sometimes collaborate to a more um, extensive degree. Um, here's our uh, home page of our Tribal P2 site at one time that um, when we were featuring renewable energy. So we had three different presentations from around the country on renewable energy. Um, but basically, our, our primary goal with this work group is to is that we know that our peers are doing great work around the country, and um, and our main goal is to to share that work through this peer to peer network and to share their expertise. So our current initiative that you are all here for is um, is the Green Casino Initiative, and we're going to be um, just similar to what we did with our renewable energy series. We're going to have um, a series of talks on the fourth Tuesday of each month. Um, today's the first one on energy efficiency. We'll have another presentation on energy efficiency February 26th. Then we'll talk about products and green building um, and the design for the environment program. We'll talk about solid waste and food recovery, ventilation and smoke-free, smoke-reduced facilities, and other amenities. And when we talk about amenities, we're talking about things like um, golf course, spa facilities, that type of thing. So we have some speakers lined up for each of these talks, but um, but I wanted to just, if you or your colleagues have any expertise in one of these areas, um, we like to feature two to three um, tribal casinos on each of our calls. So if you have any ideas of colleagues that, that might um, have some expertise in these issues, then, um, then please get in touch with myself or Shannon. Um, in, in addition to this webinar series, um, we're also pulling together a lot of great resources that exist, and many of you have probably seen these. Um, some EPA uh, regions have put together different pollution prevention, best management practices for tribal casinos, um, and they're a, really an excellent resource. Um, I have written an article for Green Biz um, with, along with the Santa Inez tribe on, um, on how they cut their energy costs by 18%, which is, um, did some dramatic energy efficiency work. Um, and so and other some of the other resources that are already existing um, are some of these guide uh, some of these um, fact sheets on um, case studies on different opportunities that 
um, that casinos can have in reducing their solid waste, the fact sheets on bathroom air hand dryers. Um, I'm just showing you a couple of different examples of what's out there. Um, this fact sheet's on solid waste and food waste reduction. Um, here's one on energy efficiency, LED retrofits for slot machines. Um, and here is, are some fact sheets on green certification and rating opportunities. And then there's a um, then there's a website that has started to put together some different tips for um, for facilities that are for casino facilities that are looking to green their operations. So many of these were created quite a few years ago, and we're pulling these resources along with um, some additional information into a toolkit that we'll be putting together along with this webinar. And all of these webinars will be. Um, recorded, they'll be available on our website, and there'll also be a component um, on a thumb drive within this toolkit. So um, we'll just look forward to that happening in the next, um, in the next six months. Um, here's my contact information, and um, again, here's our website, tribalp2.org, and we also have an additional website, um, which is peakstoprairies.org, and that has some more general information about um, the Rocky Mountain region. So with that, I want to um, turn it over to our two speakers. Today we're talking about energy efficiency with regards to lighting. Um, we have Captain Harold Albrecht. He's from he's the director of facilities for the Snoqualmie Casino, and we have Bruno Zager. I hope I pronounced that right. Bruno. He's the environmental environmental specialist with the Fond du Lac Tribe. Um, if and just a quick point on logistics. If we have any question, if you have questions, although it is a webinar and you are all muted just by default, if you do have any questions, you can type them into the question pane, which is uh, you should see on your little um, your little toolbox or your um, little dashboard, I guess is what it's called. Um, so you can just type your question into your question pane, and I'll just um, have the opportunity to. Uh, to share those questions with our speakers as we go along. So go ahead and do that anytime. Um, and if you have any questions directly for me, you can also type that into either the chat pane or the question pane and just select organizer or presenter. And, and then I will be the only one that sees that. OK, so without further ado, I'm going to turn uh, this presentation part over to Harold. And this might take a second because dealing with technology here. But um, Harold, can you hear me? Yes, I can. OK, great. <clears throat> so I've turned it over to you. And right. can you uh, see my slides? We can't see your slides yet. So what you need to do is, um, at the top, click Show My Screen. Up at the top, Show My Screen. And that little? Um... It's a little, looks like a pause button or a play button. Control panel. Your full screen mode. Is that it? It's, it says. Um, let's see. It should be on the little on the dashboard for um, for the webinar at the top. It will say screen sharing, and then under that there should be a play button. God, I don't see a screen sh sharing thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Well, Hold not on. to worry. We could do. We can go with Plan B. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, no, no, not a worry. OK. And so just, um, you see that? Yes, ma'am. OK. So just let me know when you want me to move forward. All right. Well, let's uh, start with the next slide, then. Um, I thought I'd start off with um, why um, LED lighting, and this is probably a redundant statement, but <laughs> since everybody's here for that, but I thought I'd run through the list here real quick because there were a couple of surprises for me uh, in this uh, evolution of uh, getting LED lighting here. Uh, first of all, everybody knows that you know we're going to reduce power consumption, and anytime you can take a hundred watt light bulb and lower the uh, wattage consumption, actual power consumption down to 8 or 9 watts, um, it's a win-win. Um, 
for us. I mean, it's it's going to save money. It's going to save power. There's no doubt about it. Um, LED light bulbs outlast everything else out there, um, and they are a lot more robust when it comes to power surges. I've been finding out. Um, typically, they last 50,000 hours. Some of them are even longer. Depends on if they're dimmed down a little bit. Uh, they'll you know they'll last even longer. But uh, full output. You know, uh, a decent uh, brand of light bulb lasts about 50,000 hours, which is huge in the casino departments uh, maintenance-wise um, because uh, we reduce our manpower expenses, which is down below there a little bit. Uh, another huge plus for me uh, was uh, they generate very little heat. Um, it actually took some load off of our air conditioning systems, and as all the casino operators know, you probably air conditioned about 95% of the time because of all the heat uh, generated from the slot machines and the bodies that are on the casino floor. So that was, uh, that was a huge break there too for us. Um, and one of the things I got down there is uh, LED lights are less apt to break. And the reason I brought this up was because recently we had our uh, health inspection. And uh, you know, one of the concerns is is having uh, you know light bulbs unshielded over you know food preparation areas, and uh, because most LEDs have polycarbonate lenses, uh, they meet that requirement, and you don't need any special shielding or anything like that to go along with a uh, LED type uh, light bulb unless it has a glass globe. But the other than that, though, um, you know that was another little benefit we uh, stumbled across. And last but not least. Obviously, they're more friendly to the environment. Um, you know, eventually, I would like to get all of our fluorescent light bulbs changed out here on our service level to LED lighting, and I'm still looking at options for that. Um, that won't cost me an arm and a leg, but um, there's there's some benefits to that because then we can get rid of the fluorescent tubes, the mercury, the recycling of those, and um, it you know it's just a lot better deal all the way around. So those are the main uh, things for why we looked at uh, the whole LED lighting scheme, plus incandescents are going away uh, uh, by the federal mandates. Uh, next slide, please. Um, there are some things that are unique to casinos, and uh, I put down here, uh, casino years are like dog years and wear and tear. <laughs> um, we are online 24-7. Our lights are never shut down. Uh, our power is never turned off. We're always occupied. So as far as a wear and tear perspective and the amount of hours something lasts, it's really uh, accelerated when it comes to a casino environment. Um, we also have very specific lighting needs, uh, especially when you deal with uh, the video uh, surveillance folks. Uh, they're pretty particular about lighting color, intensity, hues, hot spots in our cameras, things of that sort. and what we also found out was is if you dim an LED down to a certain point, you get a shutter effect, and it shows up in the uh, video circuits or the video feeds of a casino camera. So you got to be careful there. Um, one of the things that's always important for us is the lighting must always meet the interior design intent. So in other words, we designed this to a specific style of uh, of interiors and the lighting must continue to meet that design intent. So when you're changing your light bulbs out, you want to try to make them as transparent as possible um, so that eventually nobody even thinks that they were changed out. So they can't tell any difference. And um, by uh, default, uh, we are a large en energy consumer. Uh, once again, with patina slot machines and lighting and everything else being on 24-7, you know, we suck up a lot of power. Um, my average power load here is about 2.3 megawatts for this casino, and we got about 1,700 slot machines and 65 gaming tables and five restaurants. So, uh, you know, we do suck up a lot of power here. Uh, next slide. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, one of the hardest things for me and for my department too was, you know, so getting started at this. Um, this was like a year and a half process to try to get us switched over to LED lighting. Um, and the main problem was is trying to match up LED lighting with the existing lightings. 
you know existing lamps that we have, and uh, that's much easier said than done. Um, as an example, um, the lights over our gaming tables are MR16s, and at, when we first started looking at this, there wasn't an MR16 LED equivalent out there that had a wide enough beam spread to uh, create hot spots or hot lighting spots from showing up on the gaming tables. So that was a huge problem for us until we finally found some LEDs, <laughs> uh, MR16s that actually worked, and uh, they've been a fantastic addition ever since. Um, because every time we had to change one out, we had to re-aim re it and uh, go through surveillance and make sure they all work with the, you know, the cars laid out on the tables. Um, it was a it was it was a major problem for us. So, um, and since we put the MR16s in a year and a half ago, we haven't changed one yet. Uh, they've been pretty bulletproof, which is you know a great surprise for me. Um, once again, um, the goal on installing these uh, LEDs is that they're not noticed by the guest employees or cause any operational issues like surveillance or dark spots or things of this sort. And once again, it's a very, you know, sensitive thing. And, you know, nobody says anything when it looks great, but if it doesn't, they'll let you know in a hurry, you know. So <laughs> from a facilities perspective, uh, that's always a very uh, important thing. Um, early on, you need to contact your local utility provider about possible rebates. Um, I was a little skeptical. I've always been skeptical about rebates because I've been burned a few times by those. And uh, but we did get involved with our utility provider, and um, and it worked out good. Uh, we just almost a year later, we finally got our check of uh, I think it was like twenty one thousand dollars is what our rebate was. So, um, but we did get it. So, so that's a beautiful thing, and then it cut down on the uh, initial cost of the install of the light bulbs. Um, just my opinion, um, I always do not include the rebates in my return on investment projections to uh, upper management. And the reason was be is because I've been burned too many times on uh, on rebate deals. Uh, they don't materialize, they don't happen, there's always some kind of glitch, you know, somebody didn't fill some paperwork out correctly, and next thing you know, the rebate, you know, doesn't dries up or you missed your timeline or something, but um, I always put it down at the sidebar and say, hey, you know, if we get the rebate, you know, this is how much it's going to be, and this could be uh, in addition to the other savings that we would normally get. Um, I also recommend working with a well-known lighting supplier. Um, uh, LED light bulb salesmen are like snake oil salesmen. I mean, they're, you know, they're out there everywhere. Everybody wants to sell you, sell you LEDs, and, you know, the guy was, you know, you know, selling book racks the day before, now he's selling LEDs, you know, so I would really, really try to work with somebody that, you know, you work with all the time and uh, and get them into the uh, into the program, have them help you research uh, what LEDs to get. And um, also, um, our lighting supplier assisted us in the preparation of all the documents for the utilities, which was um, pretty interesting to fill out. Um, there were several spreadsheets involved uh, with with that, and it was kind of cumbersome to get all that filled out, so they really helped us out there. <clears throat> now, next slide, please. Um, I thought I'd get into the numbers here real quick, um, what we've mainly done so far. Um, and so far, we've replaced 950 100-watt PAR-38s, 50-watt PAR-30s, 75 50-watt PAR-20s, and 183 MR16 uh, lamps over the gaming tables. Um, and, you know, just the 950, 100-watt lamps themselves, these are all the high ceiling lamps, took out a lot of heat out of the building. It was amazing. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> um, the This particular slide shows um, the projections that were uh, as a result of the documents we fill out with the utility. And uh, they put in the total price of the, of the bulbs. So you can see that their uh, estimated annual facility, uh, utility bill savings was 58437 uh, We received 21500 back from the utility. So our net installation cost is 44799 And um, they uh, projected a payback uh, after the incentives of eight months, 
and um, it, it it was amazing how accurate this thing is. Um, I went to the electric bills or the um, or the cost of our uh, electric bills 2011 versus 2012, and uh, we are saving right at close to 5,800 bucks a month, and uh, it's it's it was absolutely amazing. Uh, a little bit more than what uh, they had said because of the energy savings on the HVAC side of the equation. And that does include all the man hours and, and everything else. So it's been a win-win situation for us uh, overall. Uh, next slide, please. <coughs> I've talked about this already, but you know the indirect savings were, were a definite plus and a definite bonus for us. Um, you know, we reduced the casino heat loading from the incandescent lights. We saved labor. Uh, surveillance department, which was uh, uh, what I didn't consider, uh, was uh, really happy because we're not always constantly adjusting cameras to adjust for different light bulbs. Every time we change a light bulb, you move the angle a little bit or something like that, and and so we you know to realign all that is always a uh, um, is always a uh, a problem for the surveillance department. Also, we've reduced the impact on our casino guests because we're not out there with lifts and ladders so much uh, changing light bulbs. And so, uh, you know, being 24-7, you know, there's always somebody at that particular slot machine where your light bulb is burned out at. And and so, you know, you either got to wait for them to leave or ask them to move to another machine, you know. So, once again, uh, it's just a little bit extra, you know, help with the guests there. Next slide, please. And once again, um, you know, we went through the electric bills, and uh, we're saving about six grand, fifty-eight hundred to six grand a month. It's kind of hard to calculate exactly because we've added some stuff uh, to the casino, another restaurant. But um, you know, our average electric bill is one hundred five grand a month. So you can see, um, you know, that's that's a, that's a nice little saving. And uh, once again, the number came in higher than the projections. Um, uh, next slide. Going forward, um, we want to tackle the parking lot lighting, and uh, and this is probably as problematic as trying to change out the casino lighting for us because uh, we have two different types of parking lot lighting. Uh, we have a big parking garage which has these uh, you know boxes uh, with uh, high pressure sodium lamps inside of them. And uh, then we have the uh, pole light lamps, but they're all decorative. They're all a designer lamp, and it's a, a designer head on them, and all this other kind of stuff. And to date, I'm having a hard time finding something that'll fit inside those pole lamps. And um, they're making more and more uh, variables uh, when, with regards to LED designs right now. And um, yeah, I think I might have found one, but um, we're waiting to see if that's going to do the job for us or not. Uh, when it comes to the garage, um, part of our deal with the uh, city and everybody when we built the place was is the lighting was going to be the kind of orange glow, high pressure sodium lamps, and they really don't make those in LED. You know, LED is a stark white uh, lamp in most cases, so getting the color of the lamp is uh, going to be challenging for us. Um, but we're going to be building a second garage here pretty soon, so I'm kind of waiting to see what happens with. Uh, that one. And um, any new projects that we do, we just built a new restaurant, uh, 12 Moons over here, and uh, we specified all LED lighting in the restaurant. Uh, every light fixture uh, was built with LEDs. And uh, you would think that that would be a uh, easy process to do too, but it's, it's not. It's amazing. It's, there's a lot of designer lights out there that are still um, using incandescent lights. And uh, it added some money to the uh, price of the lighting portion of the project, for sure. Um, but um, I'm really glad we did it um, because some of these lights are way, way up in the ceilings and they're really tough to change out. So I'm, I'm happy that uh, they're LEDs and they're going to last a long time, especially there because they're not on 24-7 in that restaurant. Uh, next slide. Um, anyway, I hope this has been helpful in some small way. Um, there's a ton of information out there um, to the point, in my opinion, it's information overload sometimes. Um, there are so many different LEDs out there. Um, but um, 
it's kind of interesting is when we first started looking at this, we looked at Cree um, LEDs, and Cree does make some really, really good products. But in the beginning, when we talked to the utility and talked to Cree uh, about a year and a half ago, they indicated that the LED lights had to be of a type that you couldn't unscrew. Um, so, so in other words, you know, we get the rebate, and then we turn around and put all the old light bulbs back in and, and continue on our merry way. Well, that wasn't going to be the case, obviously, for us. But, but still, though, it was it was a problem, and the labor to change out all the light fixtures or take them apart up in the ceiling was just really it, it just wasn't there. You know, it was just going to be way too expensive. But later on, we found out we could still get the rebates with just a screw and replacement bulb. So we wound up going with a Toshiba bulbs, and um, in, in most of the locations, and uh, they actually matched our color of our existing lighting and the uh, beam spreads a little bit better than everybody else did, so we wind up with them. But um, my phone number's up there. That's my cell phone. Uh, it's on 24-7, but I appreciate it if you didn't call late at night. But uh, <laughs> you can call me anytime you like, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, and if I'm available, I'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Great. Um, Harold, thank you so much. I have a couple questions, and also um, this is a great opportunity. If you haven't typed in your question already, go ahead and do that in the, in the question pane. But um, a couple questions for you. Um, a question regarding whether the net savings, so that $6,000 a month you were talking about, if there's any effort to put that back into future retrofits, or if that just sort of gets clumped back into, or if, if that just... That just comes back into it, but you know my my marching orders and and my uh, push right now is is we're we're going to be 100 percent LED at some point in time here, and um, you know like I said the next projects are the parking lot lighting and the garage lighting, which is a huge um, you know consumer of power for us um, when they're on. Um, we uh, we have 100 percent backup generators here, and um, we are on generators uh, during a extended power outage and you know and the uh, all the parking lot lights came on automatically like they normally do and I was I was shocked as to how much more load that put on the generators um, it, it, it jumped it up by close to 300 kW uh, so so it, it's a, it's amazing how much uh, power those parking lot lights um, all consume so so that's our next big thing and uh, we're in the process of a big expansion here um, in the beginning of it and um, one of the specifications that's been laid out is we're going to do all LED lighting everywhere um, in our uh, next expansion, which is going to be hotel and convention space and all kinds of good things. So. And Harold, did you, um, when you were talking about the calculations for the return on investment, did you use one particular application for calculating that? Or um, did actually, any recommendations? The, the utility provided that. Okay. They, um, and, and it was an Excel spreadsheet um, um, pr uh, package uh, that you had to fill out in order to get um, the, um, you know, the rebates. And their numbers um, came out remarkably close to what I'm seeing. I was, I was, I was surprised. Um, we're actually doing a little bit better than, than what they had projected, but um, uh, on uh, energy savings, I think. But, but the you know, their, their, their numbers were really, really close to what uh, actually occurred. And uh, and that's why I say I would get a hold of your utility right off the bat and say, look, we're looking at converting over to LED and, uh, you know, what programs are available, what's out there, because you know, each utility is a little different. And um, so, you know, it's really site-specific uh, when it comes to that. Great. And one last question. Did you start with one area of the facility that was easier than another, or did you just try and tackle the whole thing at once? You know, we started off with the table games, <clears throat> only because they were such a problem <laughs> changing those MR16 lights out for us all the time. They were, ex they were extremely hot, and trying to change one out and, and get it lined up when, you know, somebody wants to play a, a, a blackjack table or a blackjack game was really a problem for us. So. That was our first experiment with uh, with changing out to LED, and um, then uh, we, you know, after that, you know, we made the change over to the uh, um, to the ceiling lighting, and I actually didn't apply for any kind of grant or any kind of rebate for the LED lighting, which is a mistake on my part probably, but um, 
because you know so we were we didn't get any kind of uh, rebate for the, all the LED lighting um, we just went ahead and did it because uh, it was just a, a lot as a win-win for everybody you know surveillance maintenance you know interruptions to the guest I, it was just a um, good deal all the way around and we don't have the cleanest of power around here um, I was real concerned about that um, you know with power surges and power bumps whether you know how well the LEDs would hold up but I haven't lost one yet and uh, knock on, you know, knock on plastic. Um, I'm pretty happy about. It. Great. Okay. Well, thank you. Oh, one last question um, was whether you've done any other operational changes. I'm assuming with regards other to than lighting. Lighting with regards to just energy or. Um, probably everything. with regards to energy. Okay, and I mean, we do all kinds of stuff here. I mean, we, we're, we're heavy into a recycling program. We have our own environmental department, and I should have had them actually participate maybe with this. Um, but um, the travel environmental department is really strong here, and they, you know, they do a great job. Um, but um, we're, we've been pushing, and God, this is like trying to lead a horse to, to water, but you can't make them drink type thing. But We've been pushing everybody to turn off their lights <laughs> on their offices and, and when they're not there and turn off computers and turn off monitors and turn off the stereos and, you know, occasionally, you know, get somebody who decides they're cold and they got a hidden space heater under their desk and, you know, it's all those kind of things. You know, everything adds up and, and you know, we've been pushing hard on that, uh, trying to, uh, trying to, you know, keep whatever's not being used turned off. Um, but with regards to heating and air conditioning, though, um, we're 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 on 100% exhaust and 100% air intake. We have um, energy reclaiming systems on the exhaust side, but still, that thing runs 24/7, and it's it's a constant temperature system. So I can't do much with that with regards to energy. So except trying to keep the heat low down. Great. Great. Well, thank you. Well, I think Harold's going to hold uh, is going to be with us till the end. So, if you've got any other questions um, while um, our next presenter is talking, then um, go ahead and uh, send those my way. Um, and at this point, um, I am going to ask Bruno. Bruno, are you out there? Yes. Okay. Great. Um, I am going to pull up. Okay, Bruno is um, the environmental specialist with Fond du Lac. Do I have that right? Yes, also slash energy project manager. <laughs> A few okay. hats I wear. <laughs> okay, great. Which is three quarters of my job now. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, and I should say that um, that um, I don't know if everybody's familiar with where, with where Snoqualmie is, but you're just outside. Harold, you're just outside of Seattle, correct? In the Pacific Northwest. Yes, that is correct. Area. Okay. Yep. And um, and Bruno, you are in just outside Duluth, correct? Yes, just southwest of Duluth, about 20 miles. Okay, great. In Cloquet. I just wanted, uh, I'm okay to take off here? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay. <laughs> we uh, uh, started working on energy efficiency here quite a few years ago. Uh, but I came in about 10 years ago and started uh, looking at all the buildings here and putting them on a list. Uh, we started off with different projects from PV to um, energy efficiency and energy audits. And that was the bigger, biggest bang for the buck was when, when we started uh, looking at different grants and to install any type of alternative energy. Um, the biggest bang for the buck was doing the energy audits and seeing how we could reduce the energy. And that's when we got into lighting retrofits, just because it was the biggest bang for our buck. Um, and then we started a spreadsheet um, of all the projects. And actually, um, just as Harold had said, uh, we applied for a D Department of Energy grant once we identified a lot of the projects that are on this spreadsheet that you see here. Um, we had a larger spreadsheet and applied for a DOE grant. Uh, and as you know, there's you know too many people applying for a small pot of money. Uh, so then we just looked at the cost-effective payback and the utility rebates and just started doing the projects. Um, just like Harold, it's like it just made sense when you have a five-year plus bulb with an LED and you save man hours and electricity. And if you look at the numbers at the bottom, the green projects the up in the spreadsheet in the green area um, 
are some of the projects that we're working on now, but when you go to the about the fourth, one, two, three, fourth from the bottom, 359 uh, parking ramp fixtures uh, we landed up putting in. Those fixtures were 175 watt um, metal halide bulb in there. We went down to 50 watt with a Sun Park LED. Uh, first off, we put in five of them in a corner because as as uh, Harold had said too, um, you have cameras on the casino parking ramp and you want to make sure that they have enough luminous to, for those cameras to work. So we put up a pilot project and searched for the best fixture um, and that's, I can't say enough about that too. Um, this was a company we used, I ended up using um, Lighting Maintenance Service uh, which is a company that the Minnesota Power had uh, also had used in one of their parking lot um, LED fixtures, and I've searched uh, and worked with several different companies on fixtures and and bulbs, and I, I can't believe how many people, like uh, Harold had said, everybody that comes out of the woodwork when you're doing a project to sell you something and really do your homework on what bulb works. The Toshiba, we have end up using that too, along with these Sun Park fixtures, and I'm real happy with them. We haven't had anything, knock on wood, uh, that's uh, gone out yet on us, and we've even had uh, bulbs that, uh, you know, uh, we had somebody burn their hand, a little kid in the casino on the floor, light flooding a, a light uh, stairwell. We immediately rewired those fixtures. They called us. We got bulbs over there right away, and they installed them, and they burned so cool that it was a win-win. You know, no more kids are going to burn their hand on a piece of glass um, that has a light bulb under it anymore. So when you look at a you know something like um, just that 30, 359 fixtures um, in the parking ramp, that was a hundred and five thousand nine hundred and five dollars cost. The rebate was thirty four thousand four hundred and forty. Cost after rebate was seventy one thousand four sixty five. Annual savings is forty thousand two twenty five. So a one point eight year payback, and that's not including the labor that you're gonna not have to relamp in that five year plus. Um, so it's it's just a no brainer when you start looking at a twenty four seven operation. You can go down the whole list here. We've uh, from our parking. Know, are these projects from just this one year or is this from the past? What kind of time frame is this? This is just the two thousand twelve and we're oh. rolling into two thousand thirteen this month oh, to finish gosh. it up. Okay. This is one year that we were able to reduce, um, you know, our council signed on to Kyoto Protocol to uh, produce so much 20% uh, renewable energy by 2020 um, on our electric end of the utility. Well, we're, you can look at the uh, numbers that we had at the bottom there that you went down to and um, the savings alone just from all these projects when we're finished, which will be the end of this month, um, we'll have yeah, the green ones up on top are just being finished now. They've already finished the gymnasiums with the high bay fluorescence because we couldn't find an LED um, that would work for uh, a game. When you're in a gym, it's very difficult to find an LED that will track well when you're running with a basketball to play a game uh, because of the difference in the way the LED versus fluorescent versus uh, metal halide bulbs um, light a, an area and when you're moving fast in a game you can't have anything that's distractive. So we put an LED pilot up in the corner and it just didn't work yet. They're they're getting real close on those for gyms now and I actually have seen a couple come out yet this just this last few months. So that may be coming in the near future but high bay fluorescence um, can take a pretty good impact and we've installed those in five gymnasiums that work really well too. But our casino we've replaced, oh geez, 3,000 about 3,000 bulbs approximately and including all the fixtures so there's quite a bit of savings just in the casino alone and now we're starting to benchmark everything. We just have our list done for benchmarking and uh, we pulled a person on board to start benchmarking all of our buildings so we can look at the energy use in the past and we'll have all of that um, within the next six months we'll have that up um, for use on our website. Um, what we've used in the past, what we're using now, and what we'll be using in the, um, in the future for the next five years on all these projects. So it's just like Harold saying, everything 
um, that you look at. You look at your suppliers of the products. Um, you look at um, what type of uh, fixtures you have. A lot of time fluorescent dedicated cans now. You can't even change the bulb to change that. If you can do it up front with LEDs, you're so much better off because uh, the ceiling cans are now dedicated fluorescent cans. So to a retrofit is somewhere between 75 and 100 bucks a can. So if you can do it up front, you're better off. Um, and then uh, what, what Harold had said also about our computer department, we did some things there too. We have our MS department so shuts all of our computers off at 5 p.m. now because uh, well, some people would shut them off and some not. So it was one way to just shut everything off at 5. And if you want to enable it, you can still enable your computer and work at night if you want to. So that's what we did uh, throughout our whole campus is uh, just shut down shut down the computer system at 5 p.m. on the whole reservation. There and if you want to yeah. yeah if you want to if you want to go to that last sheet that spreadsheet that'll show you all of the project costs that we've had this year the there's a third a fourth spreadsheet it'll be this one at okay. the bottom it's sheet four mm -hmm. just Got click on sheet four okay and you can you what's funny is because you use so much energy showing this in a spreadsheet is always interesting uh, because if you do it a uh, you need to look at what you're comparing, and we've had this year, uh, we've had $280,855 in project um, projects for light replacements. We've had 95,109 just in rebates alone. So our project cost is 185,746, and uh, that's a 1.55 year payback. So it's, uh, it's definitely worth doing when you look at the energy savings. Um, and the other thing we found, too, was um, with working with our utility company, uh, Minnesota Power, um, they also, about a year ago, started talking about a, an energy efficiency account. So we uh, signed a, an agreement between uh, our, our chair and treasurer and Minnesota Power, and they gave us 10% more for an energy efficiency account. So we roll our rebates through that energy efficiency account and we receive another 10% on top of the rebate, which goes back into this account that we pull future projects out of. So a lot of these second tier projects that are in the green um, that are being done right now, the coffee shop um, and, and a lot of the uh, uh, Head Start and the Brookston gymnasiums and such that are program buildings. We're taking our rebates and using them for those projects now and rolling them back into those gymnasiums. So all the way around, it landed up being a very good, a very good project uh, this last year. Uh, and it, it took a few years to get here, you know, between the energy audit and, and then looking at different fixtures. Um, so you just can't see enough about uh, LEDs and high bay fluorescents. And now we're looking at all the parking lot lights, too, which are 1,002 to, uh, 1, watts. We'll be able to reduce to 200 uh, each for LED parking lot lights. Probably a couple of lightheads will do it, um, probably about 400 watts max. So that's where we're at right now. Great. And did you want me to show this information sheet on the? Um, sure. Okay. Yeah, for L LMS. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it it talks a little bit about you know companies that are out there um, doing things. LMS has been all over the United States. They've done Staples buildings. Um, they've done a lot of lighting fixtures throughout the U.S. Yeah, and that's funny because they were calling me four years ago. They told me, and I had so many people calling me that it took them uh, a couple years to finally filter in and how I landed up running into them was a, another lighting seminar um, that was up in Duluth that Minnesota Power put on and I just happened to be introduced to them yeah, by our energy company that does our energy audits through Minnesota Power and they landed up being the best uh, person to run into as far as fixtures went and bulbs. Um, they are a supplier and I can't say enough about choosing a lighting supplier versus an electrician. Just like Harold had said, your electricians are going to be 
oh, somewhere about 10% more. So your electricians are good for putting wires in, but their rates are usually uh, union rate or on a higher scale. Usually lighting companies are the way to go for fixture replacements. And that's what I've done when I was contracting to residential and commercial. You want to find a lighting uh, place that supplies the fixture and bulbs versus the electrician has, has to upcharge you more uh, for it because of their labor costs. Great. So a question for um, for both of you, but um, for you first, Bruno. Do you have an energy reduction committee in place, or is this something you tackle by yourself? No, we actually we started. Uh, oh, geez, three four years ago, uh, we wrote an energy management plan for the reservation, and it was required. I noticed it was required for DOE grants, so I just pulled it off the DOE website, Golden website for tribes, um, and it had a energy management plan um, format, and then we had it pulled a team together. We were doing an energy audits on buildings four years ago, and we were having an energy um, a billing audit done on all of our energy use, too, at the same time, ironically. So we all sat down at a table and said, what are you doing? And there was four of us together, and uh, we had a couple of consultants that we've been working with since, along with our computer programming person, which is an excellent person to work with because they have a good handle on what's going on computer-wise, and we're doing the energy audit at the time. So yes, we have a, a good team right now we're working with, and have continued. We just updated our energy management plan um, two weeks ago, and we'll be formulating that again to get it out there for council for review. And then we'll put together our future projects. We just put a future projects list, which will be uh, occupancy sensors in the gymnasiums. Um, they just finished one on the school, the Ojibwe school, and that'll be happening in the next uh, four gymnasiums now we'll be looking at, and that's a 1.8 year payback. So we're looking at other measures, too. Great. Harold, did you have anything to add on the, did you have a committee in place, or was that, uh, were you going solo on this? I'm pretty much solo. Um, <laughs> we're, um, our tribe is relatively new as far as being recognized. And uh, so, you know, the reservation is the casino at this point in time, and they're adding to it all the time land-wise and things of that sort, but as it stands right now, the only facility we really have is the casino. Um, so so it, it's a <clears throat> pretty closely held little deal here right now with regards to energy management, but the tribe does have an environmental department, and they're really into recycling and, you know, and, and things of that sort and stewardship of the environment. So, um, But when it comes to the casino, I'm, I'm kind of on my own. Mm -hmm. Great. And um, Bruno, you had mentioned that you post this information on your website. Is that right? Or that you post updates on there? Uh, we'll be putting this on the website. We have, a, right now we have a biomass conference we were just, just had here um, about a month ago, and we'll be putting information on that on the website, too, on presentations uh, for the biomass conference. So we'll be putting some of this on the site, too, because we have from our um, from Fond du Lac, uh, it's just www.fdlrez.com. Then you can go to our resource management division to the environmental program and then to energy. And there'll be a few things on there. There's a five minute video on a, a 10, uh, 12.25 kilowatt PV system going up on the lead resource management building um, there right now. But we'll be putting this up there in the near future. We're just about done benchmarking, so we'll put some of this stuff up there too. Great. And um, just one final question for both of you. I'm wondering if you uh, use this information as sort of in any kind of marketing materials for your casino customers, or if this is really just, you know, bottom line basic finances. I don't know about for you, Harold, but it's, I think it's, I was told by the casino um, enterprise manager that anything you can save me on my lighting, Bruno, it'll save me a lot. <laughs> so that's where my marching orders came from. <laughs> and so I just did it, and it's, uh, I'm glad I did now. And if we can use it in the future, I think it's, it's good to 
put some good advertisement out there, so hopefully we can use it some way in marketing. I'll have to talk with our marketing manager. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're looking at, <laughs> it's kind of funny to say that, but I mean, essentially, I mean, my original intent was just, I was just trying to get our electric loads down some and hopefully save some money on the electric bill, but um, we have two generators here that have to run in parallel to carry the entire load of the casino and uh, the property, and uh, so each generator puts out two megawatts, so I was trying to get us down below two megawatts was my original intent, and I think I would have made it except for the, uh, we had another restaurant <laughs> on board, so that, you know, brought me right back up in power again, but, um, you know, we're doing all kinds of crazy things here, too. I mean, we're, you know, we started out giving away bottles of water, believe it or not, and um, and, it's, and it's a great little perk for the guests, but but when you give away 250,000 bottles of water a year, literally, um, it gets to be a, a big deal, you know. <laughs> I mean, that's a lot of bottles of water going in the waste stream. So we're in the process right now of uh, putting water bottle filling stations around the casino floor for people to, uh, you know, either fill up a cup of water or grab the water bottle that hopefully we're going to give them, and, and they're going to fill up their uh, bottles of water that way. We have really good water here, so it was like this is crazy to – all the bottles of water into the waste stream. So we're, we're looking at all kinds of stuff um, along those lines. Excellent. Well, I can't thank you two gentlemen enough. And just as a reminder, a couple of folks had, had asked, um, our website is tribalp2.org. Dot org, yeah, dot org. And um, we will be um, posting the recording of this webinar on there, and um, and I'll be sending out some information on the upcoming webinar next month. Um, the Bruno's, um, the website that he mentioned was www.fdlres.com, and then you kind of navigate yourself to the environmental program. Is that correct, Bruno? Yes. And um, Harold, do you have any information on, on some of this information you talked about today on your website? No, we do not. Okay. Okay. So, but your presentation will be, uh, we'll post the PowerPoint presentation and the recording of the webinar on tribalp2.org. Um, I sure appreciate it. Okay. Well, and uh, their contact information will be there, and you could also contact me if you uh, if you can't find it. And um, thank you again so much for sharing your experiences. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah, have a good day. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Thank All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.